Hey everybody, Sneaky Narcotic, back at it again with another YouTube video, and today we're going to go over some more Throne of Eldraine spoilers. Um, before we get into today's video, guys, let me please ask y'all to like, share, and subscribe. I do want to mention that once we hit 100 subscribers, I do have a special announcement I'd like to make, and I'm very excited to make it, hopefully before the end of spoiler season. Now, before we get into the actual spoiler cards, I'd like to tell you guys how I look at these cards. So first, I look at them through the eyes of Commander, then Historic, then Standard, then Brawl, and lastly, because this, this set is based off of fairy tales and different mythologies, and I just like to base it off the art because they did such a fantastic job with this set and the art. Um... So let's get into today's video, guys. First, spoiler of the day. Fierce Witch Stalker. So it's too generic, too green for a creature, wolf, common. It has trample. When Fierce Witch Stalker enters the battlefield, create a food token. And a food token is an artifact with pay two generic mana and tap it, sacrifice this artifact, you gain three life. While the realm has laws in the wild... In the wilds, there are other ways of balancing power, and it is a 4-4. Four, four. So just your generic green food popper card. Uh, I appreciate them giving food the ability to be in popper. Um, I don't know why you would, because I'm pretty sure all the payoffs for popper is going to be... You know, oh, excuse me, all the... Payoffs for food tribal is going to be not in Popper. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of Popper. If you don't know what Popper is, it's basically you just pay, play with commons. Um, Popper standard is, is very popular. And I just, I don't appreciate it enough, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways, so, yeah, you know, as far as down the line, Commander, Historic, Standard... Brawl. I really just don't see this card doing good. It is a 4-4 four, 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 and Trample. Um, so maybe maybe if you were doing some weird wolf tribal, this thing could be interesting. I just don't I just don't see it anywhere else though. Wolf's Quarry. Uh, I love this because this is still the three uh the three little piggies. <laughs> And the big bad wolf that blew their houses down. Except for the smart one. I wonder which one's the smart one in this picture. I do want to say with the fierce witch stalker. I almost want to say that that card looks like it's from. While the realm has laws in the wilds. There are all there are other ways of balancing power. I'm not sure. Like in the background there's this house. And it makes me feel like Granny's uh, from Red Riding Hood. But I know it's not. Because I, I just... I feel like there's something about Elko being the big, big bad wolf. Ro uh, I think it's Rowan is her name. Is Red Riding Hood and the <laughs> the um oh, what do they call it? The Axeman is uh, Garuk. There's been this whole thing during uh, because we we kind of knew who was coming in this set as far as Planeswalkers. There's been this whole thing about Garuk being the Axeman, Rowan being the Red Ri Riding Hood, and Oko being the big, big bad wolf. So, I don't know. Just just a thought. So, Wolf's Quarry. Four generic, two green. Sorcery, common. Create three 1-1 one, one green boar creature tokens with when this creature dies, create a food token. Surprisingly, I feel like this card will see play in food tribal. And I say surprisingly because of its mana cost. The monster was gaining on them. Twice it had found them. There was only one place left to hide. Tells of the Fae. So, oh, and look, there's the, the, the big bad wolf from the story in the background. Uh, here, I'm going to move my mouse so you guys can see it right there. But anyways, um, I do think this is going to end up in Food Tribal. It's it's definitely three 1-1 one, one blockers, and then it gives you enough food to bring back the Troll King. That's interesting enough. Um, so yeah, I do, I do think you'll see play somewhere in standard as far as food tribal maybe even historic for food tribal brawl if brawl goes for a food tribal 
basically anywhere you can get one. Now, Commander, I've, I've said this before, I don't believe Commander has the support for a food drive wall, because basically you'd be putting just a bunch of common cards, like, let's say, for instance, Fierce Witch Stalker, in there just to make sure you have your food base. On top of that, I don't know so far a legendary creature that's worth the food source. You know what I mean? So, I just don't see it yet. I just don't. Fey Burrow Elder. One generic, one green mana, and one white mana. Creature Tree Folk Druid. It is a rare. It has Vigilance. Oh, it has Vigilance. That's interesting. Fey Burrow Elder gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. Tap it for each color among permanents you control. Add one mana of that color. And it is a zero, zero. So... I, I constantly mention this. I am a player and not a judge. I, I play the game and ask questions. Uh, you know, I don't come up with answers. But here's my question. If for each color among permanents you control, does that count the color identity? For instance, Golos is a, is a standard card right now, but is one of the commanders that I've been looking forward to making. And he has an ability that's pay two generic in Warburg, which is all five of the colors. And I believe it's look at, uh, exile the top three cards of your library. You can pay, play them this turn for free, basically. I'm wondering if, if that counts. If you have Golos and this card out at the same time, if you can tap this card and pay that two generic mana and basically go ahead and hit your Golos. I'm wondering if that's how that works. Um, there's multiple different things in Commander that, if that's true, even if it's not true, that this card would be really good for. Um, multiple different things. Now, I would like to mention to you guys, in case you're newer to, to Magic the Gathering, it says each color among permanents. I would like to remind people that lands are not permanents, and artifacts don't have colors, unless they do. In their, uh, in their CMC. So, I just... I don't know how exactly I feel about this card. I feel like if, if, if what I said is true, it will see play in Commander. It will see play in Historic Brawl all the way down. Um, just because of the ability... First off, just the ability with Golos alone. But on top of that, just the ability to tap for a, a good amount of mana off of one mana dork. And it's fairly cheap. And it has Vigilance. So you could do it at instant speed if you needed to uh, cast an instant spell with this creature. So, yeah, I could see it. I, I really could. Oh, uh, one other thing to mention. And I'd, I'd, it's just something I noticed recently. It's in the same color scheme as... Um, Rorari's Wake, so I just, I don't know exactly why I said that, <laughs> it just reminded me, I don't know, it's, it's the first time I've seen such a powerful mana card since Mirari's Wake, and I'm, I'm not comparing this card to that card, don't get me wrong, Mirari's Wake is like super scary, but this card just, for whatever reason, it, I, it speaks Mirari's Wake deck for me, I don't know. Folio of Fancies. One generic, one blue, artifact, rare. Players have no maximum hand size. Pay X and X, tap, each player draws X cards. Pay two generic mana and one blue mana, tap it. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. So, thoughts on this card. This card is going into a mono blue commander deck. I've, I was my first deck. Ever and still it is my favorite deck to play. Um, I make people cry with it, so I, I, I kind of re semi retired it for now. Um, it's an Arcanus deck, which I mill myself out with, but it also has the potential to mill other players out, and that's the reason why I kind of retired it is because people stopped, uh, <laughs> they didn't like my alternate win cons. Um, this card is going to go in that deck for the simple fact of players have no maximum hand size. On top of that, this card can draw you cards before your turn right there. And, and yes, each player draws X cards, but it's in blue. 
and especially in Commander, if you're in the later game and you're willing to do this XX tap, each player draws X, um, you're going to have counter spells in my in my shoes. I have counter spells a lot in that deck. And then on top of that, being able to mill your opponents that good, that's just really good. The other thing to think about this, especially in in Brawl Standard and... Uh, well, in Brawl, I, I don't mean to say Brawl Standard, in Brawl and in Commander, it's that this will this will trigger Sphinx's Tutelage, this will trigger, um, oh, what is the other card? Frank's, not Frank Sandy, although this will help with if Frank Sandy's in your, in your deck. I'm trying to think of the other one. Psychic, uh, Psychic Corrosion? Yeah, Psychic Corrosion. And multiple other cards that I'm not thinking of right now will just do really well with this card. So, yeah guys, honestly, at least buy one copy for your commander decks. I believe it will be worth it. Plus it goes in a group hug deck too. I didn't even think about that. Um, I have a Kynios and Tiro, the Heroes of Miletus deck. And that's one of my hug decks that I'd like to you know get people just basically that deck is all about um <laughs> ramping everyone up and making sure that we all play fun games of magic although my opponents don't always think they're fun anyways <laughs> oh me i love commander guys sorry this this video if, if you haven't if you haven't guessed it by the title which i'm assuming at this phase before even making the title it's going to say something along the lines of make my mono blue commander deck great again it's going to be about mono blue and about commander so um i don't know how this card's going to sit in standard i don't know how it's going to sit in brawl other than with psychic like corrosion maybe in like a fog type deck um i'm not brawl i'm sorry historic in brawl i don't know if it'll see play at all uh maybe in the multiplayer brawl format but not uh 1v1 Dance of the Mance. Well, that's an interesting name. Um, X, white, and blue. Hold on just real quick. Let me see. I don't understand what... Yeah, I don't... I like the art on both of these, but I don't think that they are from any fairy tales I know. Anyways, sorry. Dance of the Mance. Um, this one kind of looks like it belongs from the... Beauty and the Beast, because it looks like the furniture is kind of dancing around. It is X cost, white and blue. Sorcery, rare. Return up to X target artifacts and or non-aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less. From your graveyard to the battlefield, if X is 6 or more, meaning you paid 8 mana altogether for this spell, those permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So... I don't know how I feel about this card because <sighs> it just feels weird to me that these, the, the dance of the mats just feels weird to me. Now, somebody showed me some really janky Jeskai fun with this is if you were to use, in the, and this can be in standard too, uh, mirror, mirror March, I believe. And to bring your artifacts back, and uh, for each artifact, you'll make, uh, you'll get the opportunity to make multiple tokens per artifact. Although I'm not sure that they also enter as a 4-4 creature, but I guess that's true since that's what kind of triggers Mirror's March is a non-token creature entering the battlefield. And then creating tokens of the non-token creature per coin flip that you win until you lose. Um... If you enjoy Mirror March decks, go check out my videos. I have a, a couple different Mirror March decks that did really well. Elf Ball was a Mirror March deck for me, actually. Um, but anyways, side note. Side note. This card, I just don't see it really seeing play unless you're playing an artifact-heavy deck. And I mean super heavy, because this would have to be your top-end card. If you're going to pay 8 mana for a single spell, it has to be either your top-end or dang well close to winning you the game and i just don't see that happening in the new standard yet there might be some support that comes with this card um as far as like the best place to see this card would be commander commander 
can support an artifact deck. And this is the other thing with this too is I always comment about my buddy who has an artifact deck that makes me cry. And if he was to put this in that in that deck, then he would be able to basically wipe the floor with us. Granted, that deck is uh, is is it and not Azorius and any meaning of the word. Um, so I'm kind of grateful because then he could literally wipe the floor with us with just artifacts and jeez, that would be terrible. And the last the art, this the other thing too. I'm sorry. One more thing. The a lot of artifacts are mana rocks, and so mana rocks will support each other. If you're able to sacrifice mana rocks um, to some type of sacrifice outlet, and then so tap your mana rocks, sacrifice it to a sacrifice outlet, and then be able to bring it back with the dance of the mans, that would be something I could see happen. Ramp, ramp, uh, ramping by playing your your mana rocks, and then all of a sudden be able to sacrifice and bring them back and make them 4-4 creatures. I could see that. I could see that. But not in standard. I can't see it in standard at all. So, anyways. I, I think that speaks for itself. Standard, brawl, same thing. I just don't see this card. Bone Crusher Giant. 2 generic, 1 red creature giant. It is a rare. It has stomp. Which is an adventure, an instant adventure. One generic, one red mana. And then you can damage, can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. Uh, already I am seeing commander where there's a lot more of prevention. Uh, protection being in standard right now kind of kind of brings prevention in as well. Um, anyways, whenever the, the creature card... Crucial part of this is whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller, and it is a four three. Now, I would like to mention, uh, sorry, one more thing. Not every tell ends in glory. Very nice flavor text there. So, I would like to mention that it says whenever it becomes the target of a spell damage to that spell's controller so you could target bone crusher giant and it has to deal two damage to you i would like to mention that so don't don't play this in your feather deck <laughs> whatever you do don't play this in your feather deck i actually believe this is kind of like an anti-feather deck in my opinion uh it would have this because of the whole stomp thing now i don't i don't think you'll see playing commander i don't think you'll see play in historic as far as standard, yeah, I could see it seeing play. You know, if you want to get rid of a 4-3 giant, you're going to have to take that 2 damage. And with one of the biggest um, destroy target creature cards being already uh, taking 2 damage to be able to destroy target creature or a planeswalker, I really need to remember the name of that card. But anyways... That would mean that you'd have to take 4 damage for one of the more common cards that will be in standard now for destroying target creatures at instant speed. So, I just... I think that alone will make it viable for standard. Um, I'm not sure where this fits in Brawl. Maybe some type of burn Brawl. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's about as, all, as much as I can think about this. Yeah. Ventress Gargoyle, one generic, one blue artifact creature, Gargoyle. It is a rare. It has flying. Ventress Gargoyle can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Ventress Gargoyle can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. Uh, tap it. Each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. It is a 5-4. So... Four or more cards in hand, that's probably going to be the harder part of this. The attacking part, you know, you play this later in the game. Yeah, multiple times players are going to have seven cards. and Defending players are going to have seven cards or more in their graveyard. Especially if you're playing any type of control, but also if they're playing any type of spells matters deck. Uh, spells just always end up in the, in the graveyard. You know what I mean? So, anyways... I don't know how I feel about this card as far as standard. It might find a place if Mill comes back in somehow. Um, in historic, Mill can be a thing. And this can be a very viable um, 
instead of completely fogging your opponent out, this could be a very viable card to say, hey, instead of making you wait until I mill myself out or mill you out, we're just going to go ahead and start pinging you in the face because it's flying and I doubt, I doubt in, in historic there will be a lot of flying decks. Um, as far as commander, maybe, um, maybe in commander just because of its, it's only a two cost and commander kind of needs some, of some cards like this. Um, commander, it's a lot easier to keep your hand four or more in mono blue. So I could see this being a good blocker in commander, especially early on. The Magic Mirror. Oh, man. This card here. Six generic mana, three blue mana. Almost the same price as Omniscience. Legendary Artifact Mythic Rare. This spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. You have no maximum hand size. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the Magic Mirror. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. So, every single turn, including the turn that you... <laughs> including the turn after you bring this card out, we, it will draw you a card at least per turn. Then it will draw you two cards, then three cards, then four cards, and this will just get insane, especially because you have no maximum hand sides from this card. If you can give this card hexproof and make sure it stays on the board, you will you will just become a value machine. And especially with Jace, the uh, the wielder of mysteries in standard right now, I just see some weird janky like deck full of unsummons and and quenches and draw spells and just ways to find magic mirror as well and then all of a sudden just milling yourself out with jace's mis uh wielder of mysteries i don't know why that that name's so hard to say but just milling yourself out with jace's wielder of mysteries and being able to <laughs> to basically continue having answers because of magic mirror i just i think it will, i think it will be something to keep in mind um historic Probably in some type of fog deck, I could see this just as a top. In, in fact, a top into a fog deck because your fogs and historic are instants and sorceries, so that helps you make this cheaper. Um, you can potentially pay, play this card for three blue mana, and that's kind of ridiculous. Now, in commander, I, I keep mentioning this mono blue deck that I um I I very much enjoy, and this will be in the mono blue deck of course it's going to be in the mono blue deck and probably hate it out of my uh well at least eat up a counter from somebody or a destroy card from somebody i think the most interesting thing that could happen in commander is that there is a card that i like to mention from time to time called fractured identities a fractured identity uh exiles target permanent and each other player other than the permanent's controller gets a copy of that permanent. This would be such an interesting card to Fractured Identity. It's it's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Plus the art is just beautiful. I'm I'm sure I'm almost positive that this this card will be 250 because the Planeswalkers are 250 and this card art is just insane. Um as far as the card itself, I really I don't even know where to value this card, but I feel like it's going to be one of the top higher-end cards of the set. Um, at least more than 10 bucks. That's what I would think. I don't normally like to talk about money because I'm not the best appraiser, but uh, honestly, this card just... The more you keep it out, the bigger value it is. And it's it, for, for three blue mana. Three blue mana. That's just crazy crazy revenge of ravens ah this one's from edgar Allan poe oh and this one was from snow white i assume um that mirror kind of looks too big for the evil queen but oh well if i'm uh, also also i'm sorry uh the vantures gargoyle might be from the humpback of notre dame 
Yeah. Revenge of Ravens. This one's Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Three generic, one black. Enchantment. It is an uncommon. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and yet gain one life. Oh my god, it's like a propaganda, not a propaganda, I'm sorry. What is the card I'm thinking of? Um, no, propaganda, I believe. Propaganda is the one that, uh, you have to pay so much money. You know what, I'm gonna look this up. I'm, I know another version of what I'm talking about, which is Ghostly Prisons. Although I would not think this is even close to Ghostly Prison. Because Ghostly Prison... <sighs> But uh, Sire Tazdo declared that he never wanted to see the witch Yagreta again. Her familiars quickly granted his request. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Um, propaganda. Okay. But um, as far as this card, I I like it. I like it as a four up because every single time a creature attacks you, you gain four life and <laughs> your opponent loses four life. That kind of that kind of. <sighs> I don't know how to put this. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> that's that's insane. Um, and I just I think in standard this will probably be pretty interesting to see it happen. Uh, in historic maybe, in commander and in brawl I just don't see it for real because unless you're going against a token building deck, um, it's just not going to be viable. People have forty life, not twenty. And that's and you only get one copy of this, so I just don't see it happening in in Commander and Brawl. Um, and then of course in Brawl you don't have forty life. That's that's mainly me thinking about Commander. So let's go to the next card here. Iron Crag Feet, one generic, three red mana, sorcery rare. Add seven red mana. You can cast only one more spell this turn. So. The reason why this card is so good um, is because you can... I'm trying to think of what big red cards I'm even wanting to think about right now. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Atali. But Atali is going to be rotating out of standard. And that's the reason why I can't really think of Itali. Um, but... Yeah, it's always... It, 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 we'll go with Historic, then. So, on turn four, you play Iron Crag Feet, and it's one generic three red mana. You trade that with Atali Primal Storm, which is six mana. You basically get to play a spell two turns early. Two turns early. That's pretty good. Um, there... Oh, I think it's Mana Flare. There's a very similar card to this that I've seen from time to time. I haven't really played against it ever, but I know that a lot of, uh, what, whatchamacallit, um, modern and legacy players have this, and that, yeah, it's not Mana Flare. It's not Mana Flare. It's, uh, oh god, I just, I wish I could remember the name of the card. But basically, it, it's something that's cheaper and adds cheaper amount of mana. Um, but it gets to cheat you turns ahead. And that's the reason why, all the way down, Historic, Brawl, Commander, and Standard, this card will see play. Uh, plus, the art's just really cool. I like this art. Um, I'm not aware of... I, I said this when the... Because this is when the arts got spoiled. When the arts got spoiled, I said this. I don't know of any... Any... Stories with flaming swords. So, I just... I don't know what this art's for or from. Mirror Maid. One generic two blue mana enchantment. It is a rare. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. Share your darkest secret and the mirror will reveal your soul's essence. Uh, Seri Royal Mirror Keeper. So again, it sounds kind of like it's from the... From the... Snow White uh, Evil Queen... And that's the reason I like this card, is just that it's so cool. The art, art's always so cool in this set. Um, 
this card reminds me of a very similar card. In fact, it's it's almost ghostly similar, and that is copy enchantment. Um, it guess what that does? It copies an enchantment. <laughs> Uh, it comes into play, you may choose an enchantment in play. If you do, copy enchantment comes into play as a tar- uh, copy of that enchantment. I also think there was one called Copy Artifact, which is what might be the other one I'm thinking about right now. Um, yeah, Copy Artifact is, a v- is actually one mana cheaper, one blue mana cheaper. Select any artifact in play. This enchantment acts as a duplicate of that artifact. Enchantment copy is affected by cards. Affect other enchantments or effect. Um, so yeah, it kind of it, it's it's a mix between copy enchantment and copy artifact, and I I like that because you know we're getting into brawl uh, brawl being a part of arena, and with brawl being a part of arena, we're going to have these enchantments that are really good. As more than one. For instance, <laughs> Revenge of Ravens can be really good for more than one Revenge of Ravens. So that's the reason why I really like this Mirror Maid because she can make those copies in, in the formats that they're not supposed to have copies like Commander and Brawl. Um, as far as standard, I don't really see it happening. As far as historic, not really. But Commander and Brawl, this is going to be a well sought after card just because... Like I said, it's a mix of a card that a lot of people use now, copy artifact or copy enchantment, to make sure that they get that enchantment or artifact that's really, really good. For instance, one of the times I used copy enchantment, I used it on Rhystic Study, which meant they had to pay two generic mana, otherwise I was drawing a card. I would, not only was I drawing one card, I was drawing two cards. So that made the game ridiculous, and they actually flipped the table in that game, so... Uh, metaphorically, because I was playing online. But, yeah, so this this card could be sick. Could be real sick. Gonna be in my mono blue deck, for sure. For sure. Lock Dragon. For hybrid mana of red or blue. Let me explain hybrid mana again, because I, I have to do this every video. Brawl and Commander. Your commander for your deck has to have both blue and red in it to be able to play this spell. That is how hybrid mana works. So, it is a creature dragon. It is an uncommon. It has flying. When luck dragon enters the battlefield or attacks, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So, you loot anytime it attacks or enters the battlefield. Not the best ability, to be honest, for 4 mana, and it's a 3 2 flyer. Despite its ferocity, its favor can be won with a gift of something it's never seen before. I like that the flavor text kind of matches the ability text. Um, maybe some random weird standard, uh, bag of, what is it, bag of holding, I think is the name of the, the card that allows you to exile the cards, and I forget exactly what it does, but maybe some weird deck centered around that, I could see, possibly. But not in Commander, not in Brawl, and not in Historic. Barge in, one red mana, instant, common. Target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains trample until end of turn. The giant had he- uh, heard of locks, but he had yet to discover a door he couldn't open. This card's going to be really good in sealed. This card's going to be really good all the way down, actually, if you're playing non-humans. Because giving creatures trample, especially... Especially certain creature types that aren't human. Humans are notoriously small creatures. Um, and by small I mean two threes, three twos, not really five fives, six sixes, um, you know, hydras and dragons. Oh my. Um, so giving your non-human creatures trample is actually really good because a lot of them just need trample. Honestly. Um, so I think this card will see play all the way down, surprisingly. Uh, for a common. And for re- one red mana, that's really not that bad. Because you, you even get the plus two, plus two, too. So, yeah, I, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Ferocity of the Wilds. Uh, I, lo- I just love the art of this card. They get, like, just surrounded by red caps. But, uh, Ferocity of the Wilds. Two generic, one red enchantment. Uh, uncommon. 
Attacking non-human creature you control gets plus one plus zero and have attacking non-human creatures you control get plus one plus zero and have trample. Knights who excel in tournaments sometimes underestimate threats beyond the realm. So basically this is kind of like a barge in that sticks around, you know? Uh, you don't get the plus two plus two, but you get a plus one plus zero, which is good, especially because it still gives you trample. It gives, and I just, that's going to be so good. Um, now, this is one of those enchantments that once it's on the vow field, there's no point in having, well, I say that. There's less of a point to having a second, third, and fourth one. Because the only advantage you'll get is another plus one plus zero. Um, and they already have trample, so I think for three mana, that's fair. Um, it would be rare if they dropped one of the generic manas, and I think that's fair. I do like that they don't just say, you know, non-token, non-token non-human creatures, or only token non-human creatures. I like that they don't add that. All right, Grum Gully, the generous. One generic, one red, one green, legendary creature, goblin, shaman, and it is an uncommon. Each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Does it matter what it is? Take it and be grateful. It is a 3-3. Three, three. So, I wanted to see if that meant that each creature, each non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um... And the additional just is to say if you already have, like, say, for instance, Riot, which allows you to put a plus one, plus one counter on it, you can put another on there. But I'm not sure that that's how that works. I'm, I'm almost positive that it sounds like they should already be entering the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, so, for instance, Riot. <laughs> uh, this will basically double your Riot trigger if you choose the plus one, plus one method. And making your riot creatures pretty big. Uh, it is a legendary creature, so you don't get four copies of this and just sit them in your deck, in, in my opinion. Um, but it is an uncommon that does really well. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3, so that alone is good enough. Uh, that being said, I'm sorry. All the way down, uh, probably not commander, but probably historic and standard. Probably not Brawl. Just, I don't see it in Brawl. Red Cap Raiders. Two generic, one red creature goblin warrior. And it is a common. Whenever Red Cap Raiders attacks, you may tap an untapped non-human creature you control. If you do, Red Cap Raider gets plus one, plus one, and gains trample until end of turn. I admire their courage as much as I despise their savagery. Sire Kara the Bold. And it is a 3-2. Um, I just don't really see this card being that great. So I'm I'm just gonna say eh. Not not any. Not anywhere down the line. Mist Ford River Turtle. Three generic one green well, excuse me. <laughs> three, <laughs> three generic one blue creature turtle common. Whenever Mist Ford River Turtle attacks, another target attacking non human creature can't be blocked this turn. The Fae raised the turtle from a tiny hatchling. They taught it whom to ferry and whom to drown. It is a 1-5. So this card actually will probably see play really well in Popper because there will be the non-human tribal for Popper. And because this card allows creatures to basically get in damage and it has a hefty butt. So it, it could happen every single turn that you get your, let's say, 4-1 that uh, it can't be blocked every single turn. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So, even possibly standard and historic. Now, no to Commander. Commander has better cards than that. But standard and historic, I could possibly see it in as well. Sundering Stroke. Six generic mana and one red. Sorcery unco- Excuse me. Sorcery rare. Sundering Stroke deals 7 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets. If at least 7 red mana was spent to cast a spell, instead Sundering Stroke deals 7 damage to each of those permanents and or players. So, I don't really see this card seeing play because it's very expensive and it's inbred. So, unless you're playing big, big red, 
But on top of that, you're not going to... You're not going to use this card in Big Red. Big Red is going to focus on Big Red creatures. And not Big... Excuse me. Big Red Burn. Um, that being said... I'll give it the benefit of the doubt for Commander. Uh, now, we do, in Historic, have Jaya, Jaya Ballard. Um, which allows you to ramp up mana. And other cards, I want to say... Allow you to ramp up mana for instance of sorceries. So possibly, possibly for if you if you take that into mind, I just I really don't know. I, I you know what the other card I was thinking of was the uh, uncommon uncommon Chandra from Corset. Um, I believe does add red and red. So I think I think possibly. Just because of that. Now, I would like to mention this is 7 mana. And I, 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 the only other viable thing to do to get that 7 mana is in Iron Crag Feet. Because, hey, it says add 7 red mana. So, possibly a combo there. Um, I just, I think that's a lot for the combo, you know. So, now we're going to get into some translation cards. I think there's only two, so this will be real quick. But... Love the art on this, just, it reminds me of Little House on the Prairie for some reason, I don't know why. Um, but it's court Countryside Villa. Countryside Villa enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other planes. If Countryside Villa enters the battlefield untapped, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It's whatever, right? I mean, it's not like it's very good. Uh, it is common land, so... Ooh, I'm so sorry guys. I'm recording this way too late um, But it is a common land so it's not much you can ask for but I assume there's gonna be a cycle of this and I don't really see I was gonna say maybe in a field of the dead's deck this matters But I just don't see it honestly. It's always gonna come in and tapped in the field of the dead deck. So nah, nah. This card actually is probably the card of the video. Um, this card is insane. Probably all the way down. Commander, Historic, Standard. Uh, especially Standard right now. And then Brawl. So, let's talk about it. It's Stone Coil Serpent. Artifact Creature, Snick. Snick a Snick with a Reach. And Trample. And Protection from Multicolor. And it <laughs> enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So, it is one single X. Now, I'm thinking again in the terms of Mono Blue Commander. Um, because a lot of times in my Mono Blue Commander deck, what ends up happening is if I lose, which I hardly ever do with that deck, um, it's because I just don't have enough defense. And I, I, even though I can make some tokens, it's not that great of tokens. So, sometimes I need a big, beefy boy, and I do have Cage Sun. I will shortly be getting, I think it's either a Gauntlet of Might or Gauntlet of Power. I always get them mixed up. I believe it's Might that uh, allows you to tap for more mana. But anyways, I'm going to be getting cards to be able to basically say to the Stone Coil Serpent, Hey, you're going to be a big, hefty boy, and you're just going to sit there and... Reach and trample for me if I need you to, and you have protection from multicolor. That's kind of crazy, especially in standard right now, where we're looking at multicolor creatures just being shoved out there. Not yet alone, there's some multicolored, um, co uh, I was gonna say commanders, obviously commanders, because those are creatures, planeswalkers that can deal some damage too. Um, or, or at least target, and I'm thinking of Teferi, although I know Hero of Dominaria is getting, you know, cycled out. But Historic even, Hero, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria cannot target Stone Coil Serpent because it's multicolored, and Protection doesn't allow that. Um, also in Standard and Historic, and yes, even, even Commander... If you're playing a Proliferate deck, you can keep adding plus one, plus one counters to Stone Coil Serpent. That doesn't even have to be a big boy at that point in time. You can just keep Karns bastioning that thing into Oblivion. And, well, swing in for your Trample damage. <laughs> That's just insane to me. Um, 
Oh, I think there's a card. I don't remember if it's in historic or standard. I think there's a card that says each uh, each player chooses one creature and sacrifices the rest. Um, I may be wrong. I might be crazy. But if that's so, you can literally just sit there with Stone Coil Zerp and just making them bigger with Karn's Bastion or a similar card. And and because it has Reach and Trample, well, it's a big creature. It has a way to get flyers. So, it can be ridiculous. It could be super ridiculous. Um, I almost want to compare this card to a card like Walking Ballista. Yes, guys, I'm bringing a throwback with that. Walking Ballista was crazy crazy this card could be as crazy as walking freaking ballista that's how i'm putting it on that note guys i uh, this is the end of the video i want to ask you to please like share subscribe thank y'all for watching um i do appreciate any views please leave a comment below we can talk about anything i'd love to talk about these cards today and how y'all think my mono blue deck is going to absolutely wipe the floor um, hell, I might even make a standard mono blue deck that wipes the floor at this point in time. But, thank y'all for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe. And this is Sneaky Narcotic, signing off.